So I'll tell you a bit about our work on optimizing code for scalable vector architectures. CPU architectures with scalable vectors allow its binaries to run on CPUs with different vector lengths. One CPU or, one, or CPU core can implement a wider vector unit than another. This means that the performance scales with the number of lanes that is implemented by the microarchitecture. Currently, two targets in LVM implement support for uh, scalable vectors. LVM is supporting increasing levels of vector length agnostic or scalable auto vectorization. The AR64 target additionally supports SV, C, and C++ types and intrinsics, as defined by the ARM C language extensions for SVE, and supports the use of vector length specific types for SVE, enabled under the MSV vector bits flag, which limits the runtime vector bit width that the compiled program is compatible with. A scalable vector is very similar to a fixed width vector type, with the difference that the number of elements is additionally multiplied by vscale. Um, vscale is an integer value unknown at compile time. It's constant for all vectors in the program, and is greater than zero, um, and in the range specified by vscale range. vscale range is, is a new attribute, function attribute, um, and LVM guarantees that the compiled program can run correctly on a machine with vscale in the range of min between min and max. If max is zero, or if it's unspecified, that means the maximum is unbounded. If vscale range is not specified entirely, it is entirely unbounded. So vscale has the value uh, range one to infinity. We have chosen vscale times n times element type over vscale times element type because it is a more expressive type. It allows to represent that one vector is wider than another. Um, there are a few limitations on scalable vector types because certain aspects cannot be expressed in higher level languages. So for example, the types cannot be used in arrays or used as global values, um, and structs of scalable vectors cannot be stored. Additionally, it is not allowed to combine fixed and scalable vector members in a struct. Because vscale, is not fully known at compile time. The size of a scalable vector type is also not fully known at compile time. That's why we had to make changes to some of the interfaces in LVM. LVM previously represented sizes as UN64T, um, and they're now represented as a new class named type size. LVM previously represented element counts as unsigned, which are now uh, represented as a new struct named element count. These structures represent a value that is either fixed or scalable and do not allow representing a type that has both a fixed and scalable component. Additionally, vector type is now split up into fixed vector type and scalable vector type. Lots of effort has been made to migrate code to work on vector type and propagate vscale. Sometimes this is trivial, just use the new interfaces or guard some existing code with checks that the type is a fixed vector type. Other times this, this is more complicated. It requires using new nodes or re-implementing the algorithm. For example, when the code is iterating over individual lanes of the vector. While we carried out this work, we added lots of accompanying tests to guard the new behaviors. So here is a little flowchart to clarify which interfaces to use and when. If the code only ever works for fixed, fixed width vectors, you can use the fixed width interfaces. So for LVM type, this means using fixed vector type and its corresponding getNum elements uh, method which returns an unsigned. For EVT and MVT, this means using getNum elements and get fixed size in bits, which return scalar values. Note that the uh, MVT and EVT interfaces will assert that the type is not scalable. So please make sure to guard your code accordingly to ensure that scalable vectors don't end up going down this path. If the code is not specific to fixed width vectors, then you can use the more generic vector type and have the code operate on element count and type size directly by using the corresponding interfaces. Type size and element count have overloaded operators for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. We recommend operating on element count and type size directly and avoid querying their known minimum values where possible. Um, if you are adding new code or extending existing code that is not fixed length specific, please be so kind to consider writing a test for scalable vectors as well. So now on to what we had to do to enable scalable loop vectorization. 
Experimental scalable auto vectorization has been enab is enabled under a flag, which is scalable vectorization equals off, on, or preferred. This functionality is, is currently guarded by build bots. Thanks to Lenaro, we now have build bots that build and run LVM's nightly testing on AR64 SV hardware. There is also a stage two builder that does a bootstrap build of Clang with scalable vectorization enabled. To enable scalable auto vectorization, we, we had to solve a number of issues. Um, the first issue is representing scalable vector shuffles. LVM's shuffle vector requires a constant shuffle mask uh, and does not allow a constant expression. Additionally, LVM does not support scalable vector types to be used for constants in the same way as they're used for fixed width vectors. So we needed a different solution. Somewhat similar, we've had to find a representation for having an induction variable as a vector. We've also had to make changes to the cost modeling for V-scale types. And finally, we've had to extend the loop vectorizer to use scalable vectorization factors. This meant changes to loop vectorization legality and creating and costing different V-plans for scalable VFs. We create different V-plans for fixed and scalable vectorization factors because scalable vectors may require different types of widening. So for example, using gathers and scatters instead of falling back on scalarizing the vector operation. So on to vector shuffles then. Um, vector splats are one of the most common shuffles um, and they are needed to replicate a scalar value to a vector. Because zero initializer is the only scalable vector constant that LVM can represent, we can use shuffle vector for splats similar to fixed width vectors. This is convenient because we can reuse existing code that tries to recognize if a vector is a splat vector. Um, we did have to add a splat vector ISD node to represent those splats in selection deck, which still uses a build vector to implement splats for fixed fix, fix width vectors. Um, vector reverse is another common shuffle used by the loop vectorizer. Um, and this cannot be represented with shuffle vector. So we've added a new intrinsic for reversing the order of elements within a vector. The same is true for splice, which is demonstrated below. Um, a splice operation extracts a single vector from two vectors, starting at an offset. If the offset is positive, it starts at the index or offset from the first source vector, as you can see here. If the offset is negative, um, the offset kind of wraps around the first source vector. So it basically starts at the end of the first source vector instead. All shuffle intrinsic works, intrinsics work for both scalable and fixed width vectors. But when using IR Builder, for example, to create a vector reverse operation, it actually creates a shuffle vector if the type is fixed width. For any new shuffle that we'll need in the future, we'll require adding a new shuffle intrinsic. But we would actually like for these intrinsics to become the new canonical form for known fixed width shuffles as well at some point, with shuffle vector being the default for any shuffles that don't implement a specific known pattern. Um, on to subvector extract and insert. Um, so insert and extract subvector are the Swiss army knife of a selection deck for scalable vectors. Um, in order to split scalable vectors into parts, we've had to modify the definition of the ISD nodes to implicitly scale the index by V scale if the subvector is scalable. We've also made these nodes available directly as LVMIR intrinsics. The example below shows that extracting the low and high half of a scalable vector. Note the offset two, which is multiplied by V-scale. So for a V-scale of one, it would extract a vector with two elements from a vector of four elements at offset two. For a V-scale of two, it would extract a vector of four elements from a vector of eight elements at offset four. So this way, it's able to index into the middle of the vector, even though we don't know the actual length of the vector. The next building block is being able to represent an induction variable as a vector. In the example below, induction variable i is used to index into an array a. Because the axis is contiguous, i remains scalar. But on the right-hand side, the expression 2 times i needs to be expanded to a vector value, 0, 2, 4, 6, and so on. For fixed width vectors, this would be implemented with a constant vector. But because we can't uh, use constant vectors for scalables, scalable vectors, uh, we had to add a new intrinsics for this uh, called step vector. And step vector returns a vector 0, 1, 2, 3, 
and so on of the requested integer vector type. And standard mill and add instructions can be used to get a vector with different stride and start offset. Now that we have most of the building blocks, we can look at how the compiler can do cost modeling if it doesn't know the lanes of the vector. First, LVM uses instruction cost for the cost types instead of unsigned and int. This type streamlines the cost type used in TTI interfaces and their users and has the ability to mark a cost as invalid, meaning that it cannot be costed because LVM cannot handle the operation for the given type. For calculating the cost of an individual operation, for example, the throughput or latency, the number of lanes is often irrelevant. A vector add instruction will have the same throughput or latency regardless of the number of lanes because all lanes can be added in parallel. For strict floating point reductions, the order is, is important and it may not, be, may not be able to do anything here in parallel. Finally, the cost is calculated as the cost per lane, for which we need to know the number of lanes. But we don't know the number of lanes because the type is a scalable vector. So here is where MCPU or MTune can help. Uh, when these flags are passed, we can get a vscale value to tune for. Uh, and otherwise, we have to assume a sensible default uh, to tune for. Uh, one thing that's important to, to mention here is that the code remains compatible with any vscale in the specified vscale range. So MCPU or MTune don't change the vscale range that's being compiled for. Falling back to scalarization is especially expensive for scalable vectors because it requires generating a loop with a scalable number of iterations that cannot be unrolled at compile time. Therefore, there is no sc scalarization fallback for scalable vectors, and we need to be extra cautious not to consider a loop legal for scalable VFs if it requires scalarization. Examples of this are predicated integer divides, which require the LVM VP intrinsics for vector predication. Um, and this is currently not yet um, integrated into the loop vectorizer. Um, other examples are um, a loop with a sign or call to sign or cos, uh, where the loop vectorizer checks whether there's a vector variant of that function available, which may not be available for, for scalable vectors. Um, for fixed width vectors, it would fall back on scalarization, but we can't do that. We check that the cost model must return a valid instruction cost if the loop is considered legal. To vectorize. Another thing that we had to consider were dependence distances. In the example below, the dependence distance is 128 bytes. For a vscale range of 1 to 16, we know the maximum scalable VF is vscale times 2 because maximum vscale is 16 times 2, the number of lanes, times 4 bytes is 128 bytes. Any larger scalable VF will generate incorrect code. Here is an example of a vectorized loop with a scalable vectorization factor of vscale times 4. Notice how the increment is scaled by vscale. Um, otherwise, this example, this code is identical to the fixed width version of the loop, albeit with, uh, with different types. Here is just a visual representation of this style of vectorization. So the previous example showed style number one, which is basically an unpredicated vector body with a scalar epilogue loop for the remaining scalar iterations. We're currently also working on to support two other styles of vectorization for scalable vectors, namely unpredicated vector body plus a vectorized epilogue loop and a predicated vector body um, without any, any epilogue loop or tail. So basically, the tail has been folded into the main vector body. Uh, style 2 and 3 do work for fixed width vectors, but we're currently working to also make this work for scalable vectors. Next up, we want to show a mechanism to generate code for wide fixed width vectors. So we can always use Neon to vectorize fixed width vectors um, smaller than or equal to 128 bits. But if the vscale range suggests a minimum range that's larger than 1, then we could use SV and SV2. This does mean that generated code is no longer portable for CPUs that have a vscale range lower than the one being compiled for. For SVE, this is therefore enabled through a special target-specific flag, MSV vector bits. We get to benefit from all the existing DAC combines on fixed width vectors, and we can reuse all the existing ISO patterns that we have implemented for scalable vectors.
The way this works is by using insert and extract subvector to move the fixed width vector to and from scalable vectors, and then using a, a mask and a predicated operation. So below, this shows how a load is widened to be performed by a mask load with a scalable vector type and a predicate that enables only eight lanes. The fixed width result is then extracted using extract subvector from the legal scalable vector. Note that the mass load returns a scalable type annex v4 i32, which is a v scale times 4 times i32 type with v scale larger than 2. And from this, um, from this scalable type, we can extract the v8 i32. The other example shows how a store is widened to be performed by a mass store with a scalable vector type. The value to be stored is inserted into an under vector with scalable vector type annex v4 i32 using insert sub vector. The fixed width input vector is thus transformed to a scalable input vector, and the mask ensures that no more than eight elements are stored. After this transformation, the existing SV patterns for mass load and mass store on scalable types can be matched, and most of the insert and extract sub vector nodes will be folded away and are not co generated. This example demonstrates the functionality. Um, note the use of ptrue, which sets the predicate of eight active elements. The code generator knows that vscale is at least two, so it can use the SV vectors that are known to be at least 256 bits. In this case, the result, this results in a more or less one-to-one -one mapping of IR to instructions. And one thing this kind of gives us for free is SLP factorization. When the compiler knows that the vscale range minimum is four for SV vectors that are 512 bits or more, it can vectorize the scalar code into SV vector operations. This makes scalable vector instructions useful in a context that is limited to fixed width vectors. So what's next for scalable vectors and scalable auto vectorization? High on the list is being able to vectorize interleave accesses. This requires new shuffle intrinsics for interleaving and deinterleaving which we're currently designing and we hope to share soon. Another thing we're aiming for is a fourth style of vectorization, which results in an unpredicated vector body loop and a predicated vector epilogue block. That way we can vectorize the epilogue without requiring a scalar tail loop. For this, we first need to implement the other two styles though. We'd also like to make better use of the LVM vector predication intrinsics um, in the loop vectorizer. There are already some patches proposed proposed on this, um, and this will help the vectorizer handle more cases that we currently can't handle, such as the predicated integer divides that I mentioned earlier. Um, but most importantly, we want to enable scalable auto-vectorization by default for ARM cores in LVM14, uh, although there is still quite a bit of cost model tuning required to get to this point. And that's the end for now. Thank you for listening, and thanks to everyone who's contributed to this work over the past few years. This has been a really massive and collective effort with many contributors. So thank you all. Uh, thank you for the talk, Sander. Uh, we have one question, and we have five minutes, so there's a lot of time. The question is, can an executable generated for a scalable target run on a fixed width target? Um, so that's something that um, we currently don't do. So, so I assume that the question is, can you compile can scalable IR be kind of transformed to fix with um, uh, code gen? And I guess that is possible. So there is, it, it, it would be possible to lower um, the scalable IR and assuming V scale is one and kind of change that to fix with vectors. Um, but you would lose the portability, of course. So I guess that is a, is a, is a possible thing, but it's not something that we, we currently do or, or strive to implement. Um, the idea of scalable vectorization is to have your code portable. Um, and if you don't want scalable vectorizations or scalable vectors, you can, you can just turn the feature off and uh, use fixed vectors. Thank you for that. Uh, we don't have any more questions at the moment. Uh, if you have any questions, you can put them in the pigeon. Okay, I hope that answer was the 
was the answer you were looking for. Um, but if not, please uh, post a follow-up question. Yeah, guys. Uh, yeah, there's one more question. Have you find uh, have you found existing opportunities to exploit scalable vectors in benchmarks? If so, can you elaborate on which benchmarks and what benefits you expect to see? Um, so, I mean, we have found that scalable vectorization doesn't really um, uh, perform like any less than 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 fixed width vectorization. So, basically, for lots of the benchmarks we've run we find that scalable vectorization is equal, equal, equally possible. Um, and so I don't, I don't have any specific benchmarks in, in, in mind here, but um, you should kind of see fixed width vectorization as, you know, if you know the, the, the vector length uh, of your target, you, you'll be able to vectorize for that. If you, if you don't know the, the length of your target, you can, you can in, in most cases, still get that same level of vectorization, but it's not that scalable vectorization can add anything else. The idea is more that if you use scalable vectorization and you would build for a you would run this on a target that has twice the vector length at runtime, um, so can handle twice the amount of elements, the performance kind of scales. All right, thank you for that answer. We have one more question. Are you interested in fuzz testing for this feature? Um, to be honest, I don't. I don't really know what to what to expect there, so um, I think I don't really understand the question. Okay. Uh, can you, uh, Levinsky? Can you please elaborate on your question in case uh, for a proper explanation, if you have? Uh, others can ask questions in the pigeonhole chat window on your screens. Uh, meanwhile, I had uh, one question. Uh, so, like, does this affect the compile time in any, like, does this poorly affect the compile time? You're saying you can optimize the code for scalable for variable length vectors, but how much degradation in compile time do you expect out of this? We, we haven't done any specific measurements, but there will be a little bit of extra compile time, I guess, because the loop vectorizer will have to consider uh, plans for both fixed width vectors and scalable vectors. But it's that will, I mean, we haven't noticed any significant um, uh, increases of uh, compile time there. And once it is a, a scalable vector IR, there is no specific reason the uh, compile time would be worse than for fixed width or anything. Um, maybe it would actually be a little bit less because there's a lot of code that iterates through each of the elements of a, of, of a, um, a fixed width vector, where in this case, the patterns are much more easy to, to spot. Okay, we have two more questions, but we don't have time for that. So uh, maybe we can uh, follow up on them offline uh, after the meeting. Okay. So thank you everyone for joining and thank you for the talk, Sandra. Thank you.